All right, welcome back to the second part of this tutorial. Uh, just as a recap, in the first part of this tutorial, I have imported point cloud data into Unity, and then I have also used the first person character controller in order to interactively allow the user to navigate uh, through this point cloud data. So I just quickly wanted to demonstrate you where we left off. We are in the middle of this point cloud data, which is uh, a representation of our seminar space uh, at Purdue University. And you can use the WASD or the arrow keys as the navigation keys through this space, going forward, sideways, or backwards. And then you can use the mouse to orbit the camera around and to look around in the space. You can use the um, space bar as the jump key that allows you to jump up and down. In the second part of the tutorial, I would like to turn one of the walls of the space so let's take a look at um, possibly the front of this space right here and uh, use this wall as an interactive trigger zone. So the idea is that whenever I cross through this wall, so I walk toward the wall and I cross through this line of points in my point cloud scan, I will be able to trigger a sound. And then likewise, if I go into the room through that wall again, I will trigger the same sound again. So here's how I'm going to do that. I need to import uh, two things. First of all, I need to import the sound that I would like to play when I uh, cross through this wall. And so I go back to my assets in my project window, and then I go asset, uh, import new asset. And then I choose the beep.mp3 file that I downloaded from uh, the sample files that I use for this tutorial. And if you're looking for these sample files, you can download them from the URL that I posted in the comments for this video. So just hit import here. And then I also would like to import um, a script that will allow me to turn um, an object, a game object that I will create, just a simple uh, cube, into an interactive trigger zone. So I go to assets, import new asset, and then I choose the trigger enter.cs script. All right, and then the next step, I also need to set up the actual area or uh, the actual uh, volume that I want to use as the trigger zone for this project. And so if I take a closer look at my point cloud scan here, just orbit the camera around a little bit, um, you see that we have uh, this outside wall right here in the front of the space that should become the actual trigger zone for my sounds. And so what I can do is I can uh, create a new game object. Uh, this will be a 3D game object cube that I want to create. And then I will uh, transform this cube, basically scale it in the X, Y, and Z directions so that it will cover uh, this wall in the front of the space. So let's do that. Let's first move that cube uh, to the front of the space. So I go into the top view, uh, click on the, uh, the Y axis of my navigation gizmo here and then go to my uh, move tool only hit the red arrow so that I move it in only uh, one direction and then I kind of slightly center it here and uh, now when I take a look at it from the side let's see try the other side here um, I can also position it somewhat in the center of this wall and then use my scale tool and only scale it in the uh, y direction and then look at it from the other direction here. Let's go one more time around and then I will scale it in the um, Z direction as well. So just have to fine tune this a little bit. Um, move it over and probably move it toward the wall a little bit more. And then just scale it right and I also want to make it a little bit oops, that was the wrong one just want to make it a little bit thinner so it's a very uh, thin wall like uh, trigger zone that I can use so something like this um, looking at it again um, at slightly different angle something like this should work actually really well and uh, now what I can do with this trigger zone, in order to turn it into a trigger zone, I actually need to apply this trigger enter script to it. So make sure that the cube is selected here, and then I can just simply drag and drop 
um, the trigger enter script um, onto the queue or onto the queue here as well. Either one should work, which gives me um, a new component in here, the trigger enter script, and this will show up in the inspector for the cube that I just created. And since in the script I have two public variables, one is called target and one is called beep, uh, it gives me these two interactive fields that now I can use in order to drag uh, my other components on here that will uh, become the sound that I can play. This is what is represented by the beep variable and that becomes my collider that collides with this cube area in order to trigger that sound and that will be my first person controller. So I can do that and uh, maybe set the target first. So I just take my first person controller from the sample scene on the left hand side and then I drag and drop this onto the target box right here. And then I can take my beep sound from the project window and then drag and drop that from the project window onto the uh, beep text box. So we're almost done. We can almost try this out. Um, the only thing that we need to do is we need to go back to the uh, box collider property of the cube and we need to check the is trigger property in here, which will allow me to turn the wall into a trigger. So it will communicate with this script where I actually use the on trigger enter function uh, in order to uh, play these sounds and also to uh, set up a counter or basically trigger a counter that whenever I cross through this wall, um, I will increase the counter by one so I can keep track of how many times somebody has walked uh, through that wall. So we can try this out. And we see the wall quite prominently here. So I walk toward it. And when I walk through it, you hear that beep sound and you also see um, in the bottom here, bottom left corner, that I have bumped it one time. Now the second time I walk through it, beeps again, it bumped it the second time, and so forth. I can turn around, walk through it again, triggered it a third time, and so forth. So the only question you might still have is, uh, right now this wall is very prominently featured in the scene. We can see it after all. Is there a way to turn it um, invisible and basically just turn these points into the interactive trigger zone visually so that we don't see this kind of solid wall in the space? And this is actually relatively easy. I just have to go back and select the cube in my hierarchy window. And then um, I go back to the mesh render component in the inspector and I just uncheck that. And that will render it completely transparent. And now when I play it back, um, the cube has disappeared and if I walk toward the wall I can walk through it it will create the sound but I won't really see anything but the uh, point cloud scan uh, and the representation of the wall. So this concludes this tutorial on um, bringing point cloud scans into Unity and then at the same time setting up these interactive trigger zones. Uh, things to think about in the next step would be um, how can you trigger some other things other than, for example, triggering sounds, uh, maybe triggering the appearance or disappearance of game objects or switching out game objects when you enter certain kind of trigger areas. And so I'll try to provide some of these tutorials as well um, in hopefully a few weeks. So stay tuned and um, I hope you learn something and enjoy working with point clouds and a little bit of interactivity in Unity.